Yeah, welcome back to Refuma Solutions. We are still on Calculus 1 and we are still talking about limits at infinity. Today I want us to carry on with finding the limits of rational functions at infinity. We've started with some other functions but today we want to talk about rational functions. Um, we have limits of rational functions at infinity. But let's establish this concept before we take other forms of rational functions. So let's start with the parent function. Assuming we have the function f of x which is equal to 1 over x, which is the parent rational function. And we are to find the limit of the function as x approaches infinity. So what do we do? So now let's use intuitive approach to find out where the limit gets to us to take x approaching infinity. Now let's take the function which is 1 over x. Okay, let's place some values in place of x and find out what happens as x increases without bounds. So when we take x to be 1, we are going to have 1 over 1. When we take x to be 10, we are going to have 1 over 10. When we take x to be 100, we are going to have 1 over 100. And when we take x to be 1000, we are going to have 1 over 1000. So let's see what happens to these values. So we'll be having a value of 1 here, 0.1, 0 0.01 and 0.001. We can see that the number started from 1, reducing gradually, gradually, and they are all approaching what? The number 0. So for any rational function, when we are finding the limit to infinity, we can see that they gradually move closer and closer to what? the number 0. So with this in mind, we say for all x, okay, all x, when we place any number in place of x without bounds, we are going to end up getting what? The limit to be 0 at infinity. So with this, let's see how we work out the limit at infinity when we have been given a rational function which may be higher than the parent function. Okay, let's take this function and find out the limit. Find the limit of the function 3x squared plus 8x minus 4 all over 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 as x approaches infinity. Now the first step is to identify the leading variable in both the numerator and the word denominator. When we take the numerator we can find out that the leading variable is x squared. Okay and it has a coefficient of 3. Also we can the denominator x squared here which is the leading variable with a coefficient of 2. So we need to take note of the term containing the highest power of x in the denominator. Then we divide each term in the expression by what? That power of x. So we can find out that 2 x squared is the highest term in the denominator, but the variable which is the highest is what? x squared. So we are going to divide each term of the entire expression by what? x squared. So we are going to have 3x squared divided by x squared plus 8x divided by x squared minus 4 divided by x squared all over 
2a squared divided by a squared plus 4x divided by a squared minus 5 divided by x squared. So now let's simplify this expression and see what happens as we are moving to what infinity. So we are going to find out that this x squared will cancel out this. One of the x's will cancel out this so that we left with 8 over x. Here we have nothing to cancel, so we have 4 over x squared. Coming to the denominator to this cancels out that. This cancel this so that we left with 4 over x and this one is also left in that direction. So now when we are taking the limit of what is left as x is approaching infinity, what happens? So now we have the limit as x approaches infinity for 3 plus 8 over x minus 4 over x squared all over 2 plus 4 over x minus 5 over x squared. Okay. So like we did for the parent function, as we have a number over x and x moves without bounds, the expression becomes what? Zero. So we use that same idea here. Three is a constant, so there is no x here. So the limit of three as x moves to infinity is still what? Constant, that is three. Um, we have eight over x. As x grows without bounds, the expression here becomes what? Zero. Also, even here, the x is squared, so this one becomes zero without mass time. It tends to zero because we are dividing by x which goes on and on without bounds. So we have another zero here all over. This two is a constant, so it remains the same. This expression is over x, so it also goes to zero. This one is also over x squared, definitely also goes to zero at infinity. So we end up getting 3 over 2 as our limit. So finding the limit of this entire expression as x approaches infinity gives us 3 over 2. Okay, 3 over 2. So that is it. Now, what can we notice about the final answer and the coefficients of the leading variables in the expression? You can find out that the coefficients of the x squared in the numerator is 3, the coefficients of the x squared in the denominator is 2, and our final answer is 3 over 2. So we can generalize that anytime we have rational expressions such that the leading variable in the numerator and the leading variable in the denominator have the same power, the limit at infinity is always the ratio of what they are coefficients. So let's write down some generalizations that we can use to compute limits at infinity necessary without going through all the steps. In case you have been asked to work that in section A, you don't need to show all this work, you only need to use the generalization to get your final answer for what the limit. So let's take these generalizations here. Now when we take any rational function in the form Let's say ax to the power m till we get to let's say a constant c divided by let's say b x to the power n also to a constant let's say e and we want to find the limit as x approaches infinity. We can do this generalization when first condition when m is equal to a as we did here our limit at infinity will be a over b that's the coefficient of the leading 
variable with the mean rate over the coefficient of the leading variable with the denominator because their powers are the same, they are of the same degree. And also, two, when we find out that m is greater than a, that is when the power here is greater than the power here, what happens? We can find out that when we divide a greater power by a lesser power, we will still be having a power left. So that power left, when we find its value to infinity, it still goes on and on and on without bounds. So we are actually going to get to infinity. That means we can't get a specific value for our limit. It still goes on and on and on. So you state infinity as the word limit. And also the third condition when m is less than a. When m is less than n, that is when you divide a lower power by a higher power, you left with 1 over that power, that is a reciprocal power. And as we said for the parent function, we have 1 over any form of what x, and you take it to infinity, then that's the limit, it tends to 0. So automatically when the power of the leading variable in the numerator is less than the power of the leading variable in the denominator, our limit tends to zero as we move towards infinity. So these three generalizations can help you to find out limits without using the actual approach, but you can get the answer straight away. Let's take an example to verify that. Yeah, assuming you have these limits, you have to compute these limits. Let's say you have finding the limit of this function x to the power 4 minus 2x plus 1 all over x to the power 5 plus 2x plus 6 as x is approaching infinity. Now, to use these generalizations here, we first have to locate our leading variables in both numerator and denominator. So this is our leading variable here, and we also have our leading variable here. The power here is 4, and the power here is 5. So we can find out that m, the power m here, is actually less than the power m here, which is 5. So we said if the numerator, the coefficient, or let's say the variable leaving there has a lesser degree than the denominator, we actually turn our what limit to zero. So this automatically gives us what a zero without showing working since we can identify that the upper power is what lesser than the lower power. Our limit to infinity definitely becomes what zero. So you can get more examples and try using this generalization to find what limits at infinity. I hope this is very helpful. Keep practicing more and you'll be perfecting yourselves in what maths as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. So we meet again, it's a goodbye.